Hi all, welcome back to Skies Above Britain. Um, this is Patrol, uh, sorry, Chapter 1, Patrol 2, and this is my Part 2. So I have just come straight back there actually, I didn't bother copying things across, because I just want to keep things moving a little. Probably going to have to go and pause again though, so I don't think I'm <clears throat> going to get the full thing in. Right, so the well, main reason I wanted to come back uh, right away was we had left things mid mid-reveal here if you like so we are still back in this phase step reveal uh revealing raid markers uh inbound vector markers we've got two more to reveal i just left that red cube just to as a reminder in case i did go away um so yeah we've yeah got blue sections being lost contact with the measure smiths event uh the suns came around which didn't help, didn't help us because we ended up placing the escort stations and the sun's helping one of them out, which, yeah, made the measure smiths worse than it, uh, it, might, it might have been. Anyway, so, right, this is the third, well, we've not had a raid marker yet. And of course, if we can avoid that, we've still got a chance of getting out of the bombers. Um, but there's still two of these to go, so here we go. Yeah, well, that's that then. Um, right, okay, so, now hold on here, there's something about the way these are ordered that can cause a little bit of trouble, so we've got flak, um, which is card 6A, um, Just want to look at card six B though, because I think think something about if yeah see, tally who read if you perf if you perform contact and the marker looks like this, which it does, which mean I think it means the flax before the raid marker, postpone applying the raid result until the raid vector step of the intersection sequence forty. Yeah, I'm going to have to go in the rules for this. Page 40. Uh, is this something that we might be getting away with? Red vector sequence. Ooh. Right, I'm going to read this in the rules then. Let's get this flak looked at in the rules. It looks like, because the flat's coming first, I mean, it's saying we're, we're not going to do the raid movement until the vector se raid vector sequence, which is a way down here, which does suggest that we could be contacting in, the, in at the bombers, possibly. The other thing is, there's another marker here still to reveal, so... I'm a little unsure about how we're going to go about this. So I think it's probably better... Hang on. <clears throat> yeah, tally-ho. And we're at high altitude as well, so that's good. Red markers on the red track and the squadron is at high altitude. You may spend one fuel to immediately perform contact. Um, if you perform contact and the marker looks like this, which it does, postpone applying the red result until the red vector step of the interception sequence. After the effects of flak are applied, go back to card one. So... We just postpone this and we go back to car one and reveal this then. And what if that turned out to be another raid icon? Right, let's get out in the let's get out in the uh, the rule book, I think. Page fifty two is flag. I mean I understand the flag but it's just the, the rest of this really. Um okay. I think it's pretty much saying the same things as on the card, I think. Here's the this is on page 52, and it, and it, this is about flak, which is what we've got. But because the flak is before the raid, if you perform contact, 
So if we if we are if we are able to perform contact on a step, um, and the flak icon is on the same marker as the red icon and above the red icon, that's what we've got, which means flak is applied before red. Postpone applying the red result until the red vector step of the interception sequence. Okay, that's um, that's really good then. If I'm understanding that properly, anyway. I mean, it definitely says postpone applying the RAID result until the RAID, until the RAID vector step of the interception sequence. And page 40 shows the RAID vector step, interception sequence, and it's that F where we move the RAID marker and reveal RAID mar vector markers. So that's when they would drop the bombs, I think. Hmm, maybe I should look at that bit in the rules. Page 40, well, I did look at it already. There it's there, and as F, read mark, read vector, real vector markers in the read marker space one at a time and apply the results until the space is empty of vector markers. We're playing a scenario, last space, last space and engaged. See, it's a shame it doesn't, it doesn't talk about that there. I mean, it does say we have to wait until this phase before we carry out that raid. But I mean, I don't think this has got anything to do with it. I think we just wait to this phase. Yeah, I'm going to look for a little bit more, I think. I think, I, I think it's okay. I think we are <coughs> understanding it. I just, just want to make sure here because this seems quite important. So give me a second. Right, okay, uh, yeah, um, I didn't go deeply into looking at that, but I came across a couple of comments and basically one question was asking if this had been, if this had been along here and this had happened, right? Let me just leave that blue cube there so I remind myself. Um, and we got this tally hole. Well, we can't make contact because we're not in or adjacent to the same zone. However, this would allow us to tally hole by moving, and this is the one I got wrong, remember. This would allow us to either move this or move it and raise its altitude, wouldn't it? Uh, I really need just tally hole. What page was that on again? 52 is the flag. Um, pretty sure that says if you can't... <clears throat> uh, if you prefer not to perform contact or can't, Whereas that situation means it can't contact, and this was what the guy's question was, um, if you prefer not to perform a can't, or if the raid marker is not yet on the raid track, well it is, but we can't because we're not adjacent or same zone, I may spend one fuel to move the squad information marker to an adjacent station or change altitude. Actually, that one's not both. So in that case, I would be able to go to that, or I could stay there and go high altitude which you would probably go there. But then that does not stop this from happening, this raid marker from then happening, because we could not... We need to be able to contact. However, we, us being here is going to allow us to do this. So I'm just going to go through the procedure because I think we can do this and stop this from moving until... And I think when we get to the raid vector step... Is that the right name? No, I don't. Ah, it is F, red vector step. Then what we're going to do then is just move that right in there, I think. Because that's what it says. It's just postponing, uh, postpone applying the red result until the red vector step of the interception sequence. And the red vector step is basically moving this and dropping their bombs. So it gives us a chance, I think. So let's... The only thing is, like I say, we've got another tile here to deal with. So, okay. So we're going to do flak. Now, because this has to happen first. Uh, so the flak number is two. Note the number printed. Draw that many damage markers her side up. Right, going to do that. So we're going to draw a couple of damage markers her side up. And we might get lucky. Ooh, that's annoying. Hey, well, what happens there? If you get an engine one. 
Does that knock it out? Does that does that knock it out when we place it on? When you check for catastrophic effect, um, although you don't earn VPs if it's destroyed by flak. Okay, well, we've no bombers to put... Yeah, I think this is going to knock one out of the formation when we eventually put it on. So we need one more as well. Her side up. <laughs> right, so there's a fuselage one as well. Um... So, we have to check this one. So we need a 10 or higher. And if I get this, I'm not sure how to deal with it. But, well, I could just put a destroyed marker, I suppose. No, we don't get anything. We got we two, so no. So basically, they're both just damage markers. I, I do want to feel that when this goes on the aircraft, though, it's going to knock it out of its formation. So we've not got a bomber formation set up, so these two are just going to be placed in there just now. And we'll get back to that sometime soon. So what do we do next? Um, yeah, it, basically that just tells you what to do there. And because there's no bomber tiles, um, we place damage markers on the interception map, which I've done later when you finally place tiles in the bomber formation, apply the damage markers. Right, friendly fire. If any area fighters are in the bomber formation area, there are not. They're all in their squadron display or there's some lost contact. But none of them are in the bomber formation area. So there's no friendly fire. So good. Um, right, and then this is the bit that Grant made a right shambles off at first. But he's got it now, <laughs> I think. <laughs> so tally ho. Raid vector sequence. Is that where we are, guys? Is that where we are? We are indeed. We're in the reveal step of the raid vector sequence. So... Okay, if the raid marker is on the raid track, it is. You may spend one fuel to immediately perform contact, slide the squadron's fuel cubes one space to the right. Right, I think we've got to do this. Uh, now, well, blue section is not part of the squadron anymore, is it? Well, no, because it's lost contact. Yeah, so it, it, it's not part of this. So my take on that is that it's just red, green, and yellow. We don't spend fuel for blue because they're away, sort of out of touch with us. Yes, that feels right. No, well, ho hopefully that's right. I think it is. It, it feels right. Um, the squadron must be at high altitude to make contact. Well, we are. So that's... That, that works as well. If you prefer not to perform contact or can, or if the raid marker is not yet on the raid track, you may spend one fuel to move the squadron formation marker to an adjacent station or change altitude, not both. Well, we're, we're, we are going to make contact. So it says, if you perform contact and the flak icon is on the same mark as the raid icon and above the raid icon, which means flak is applied before raid, postpone applying the raid result until the raid vector step of the interception sequence. So we'll need to remember that when we go there, that's when they're going to drop their bombs. Uh, I should remember. I should. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're now going to perform contact then. Um, is there a card? Yeah, it tells us in the cards. Go to card 10A. So, oops, sorry. That was a bit shoddy. Uh, let me move the rule book back just now and then we're going to go to card 10A after the effects of flak are applied go back to card 1 but three markers on the rear track and squadrons at a high altitude you may spend one fuel to majorly perform contact After the effects of flak, they'll probably go back to card one, which I think is then just going to look at this next vector marker. But we need to do the contact first. So let's, let's go to card 10A then. Let's see what this says. Um, 
if the raid marker is not, yeah, as if the raid marker is on the raid track, you may perform contact if squadron is in the same or adjacent zone. Well, we're in an adjacent zone, so yes. Uh, contact is automatic, row or die in one of the contact tables to determine squadron starting position on the interception map. To use the sun option, yeah, that's only in the same zone though. So 10B is going to be the one that tells us, because we're in an adjacent zone, uh, so I'll leave that card there, and uh, where is it? It's on the sequence of the play, this one, isn't it? Yeah. So there's the... Yeah, take that out of the way. So there's the... Um, the the two tables for this and obviously we're in an adjacent zone so I'm guessing it's not going to be as good well we can't get the sun one so so we're going to roll on this um, minus two if it's clouds well it's not clouds anymore the sun's came out and whatever and we're clear so no modifiers uh, remember we can spend more fuel here again and you know, just do that off the I just don't like when it's not lying even so Higher the better. Eight. Oh, we just missed the nose. Oh, that's annoying. We could have been a nose high. Damn it. So we rolled an eight, three to eight. So we're at tail low with the option to go flank low. Which I think we've got to take, haven't we? One more on the dice, we would have went nose low, we would have went nose high. That would have been really good. I'm pretty sure we want to go flank low. I could start looking at these tables again, but... I'll quite look at the bomber one, I suppose. Um, what was options? Nose low... Uh, sorry, tail low or flank low. I'm sure that's pretty... Now, the escort stations, we've got one in the starboard and one in the weed. I'm not heavy, I don't think that Mars. So, weed isn't too good. Starboard is a bit better. So, if we were tail... Did I say it was low? I think I did. Tail low or flank low? So, tail low... Um, weed would be three... Starboard would be seven. Uh, sorry, we're one oh nines. Uh, it would be four or seven. It's not the worst, but flank low um, would be a five for weed, so it's actually more. And oh, 10 slash five. Ah, depends what side. Uh, does it just say flank? So do we get to choose which flank? Hmm, must be. So if we go the opposite, obviously if we went if we went to the port side, which is kind of annoying because, oh, well, no, we're going to be at a low altitude, aren't we? So our altitude's dropping. Either way, anyway, so... Yeah, but if we went to the port side, we're going to have a five there. So it's a five and a five, so five... So we're going to have a 5 or a 7 if we're going in. And to be honest, we want to get right in on the bombers now because we know they're going to drop their bombs at the end of the at the end of the end turn sort of thing. Eh? So yeah, I think we do go flank low then. Okay, so our die roll was 8, which would have been tail low. We're going to spend one more fuel. Burning through the fuel here. Um... And remember, it's not including blue section because they they lost contact, uh, and then our squadron. Now I still got as a squadron marker. Now remember, they're going low altitude, so that's going to come away. Um, I'm still showing it as a squadron, which I think is fine. Although, should I put like? You know, red, yellow, and green. Markers like these out. I mean, maybe I should. Well, I think I can. I don't know. Maybe I should do that. Or I could put A, flight A out, which covers red and yellow, and then 
have the green one as well. I think it's okay as long as I know what I'm doing. I know that these, this doesn't include the blue section because um, they are uh, out of, what is it, uh, I lost contact. So yeah, we're going in the flank and we're going in there. We're going in the port low because we don't want to be in the starboard one because it's going to be harder. So yeah, I'm assuming uh, when I just said flank, we get to choose. Uh, I don't think you really need to look that up, Grant. Do you? Contact tables, page forty-four. Yeah, I'm looking though. I'm looking. Um, if you choose to make contact, well, one or more. Yeah, if you choose to make contact, well, one or more area fighters or formations are currently lost contact. Right, what's that saying then? They immediately return... Oh, bush. <laughs> Aye, okay, that's a bit of a blow. Well, just as well I've seen it now. But I don't know how you get out of that hole. Well, I'm as well still taking it, aren't I? If you choose to make contact while one or more area fighters or formations are currently lost contact, they immediately return to base, place all lost contact fighters on the RTB track in the box beneath their section's fuel cube. Uh, okay, um, I'm going to read this in a second as well. Um... Yeah, I don't know why I'm looking for a flank. Flank is surely your choice. I guess I'm, <laughs> I'm just trying to find something that says it. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, c clearly on that contact table, it's saying, well, if you're on the same side as the escort station, it's going to be a higher number. So, c clearly, I wouldn't have said that. I would have said... Yeah, starboard or port. If we're on the same side, starboard is a 10. If we're on the other side, port is a 5. And we were just to move to the flank. So it's our choice. That's fine. Right. Um, okay. Well, we need to deal with this situation then. But I don't see what we could have done there. So these are returning to base. Um, this is not really... Much you could have done, is there? So they're all returning to base. We can basically take the blue fuel cube away as well, can't we? Hmm, that's a bit of a blow. Well, it now means that this is fine as is because it's just that's all that's left in the squadron. Um. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to read. Right, hang on. Right, okay, so just coming back to this bit that I wanted to read. So it says contact. Contact ends the raid vector sequence. So... And initiates the interception sequence. Raid vector markers will henceforth be revealed during the patrol complete phase. Yeah, I'm struggling to grasp this. After rolling the die for the contact check and placing squadron's formation marker on the interception map, you must set up the rest of the game space. If escort station marker's not yet on the map, well, we'll place them. We need to place the bomber tiles. Uh, now, if visibility is clouds, we defer that. The style will only the bomber formation to empty until a fighter ends. Well, it's not. It's not clouds anymore. It's The sun's come out and it's clear. Um, I guess what I'm sort of stuck with is I know this raid icon doesn't do this now because it's been told that that's what happens but it does say that contact ends the raid vector sequence initiate and then it says raid vector markers will henceforth be revealed during the patrol complete phase which is on page 40 
withdraw complete phase. That must mean the RAID vector part of that. Reveal vector markers in the RAID marker space one at a time and apply the results until the space is empty of vector markers. Oh, this is a bit iffy. I'm not sure what to do here. So what, I'm, what I think I'm going to do is... See, the thing is, when this moves into there, we then remove all these, don't we? Wasn't that right? Um. Oof. I want to see. What is it called? Um. Vet. No, it's not. Is it vector? No. Where's... Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Raid vector. No, it's not that. Well, it's that, it's that phase. Um, raid vector. Move raid marker and reveal raid vector markers. Sorry, hang on, hang on, I'm getting right in a mess here. Red Vector, that's the one. Yeah, sorry, I'm not I'm look, not looking at the cards properly. So this is a step that would then activate that. So it says reveal vector markers in the radio, space one at a time, apply them at all. The space is empty. Space is already empty. Yeah. Yeah, see, I don't know. And then 27B is... Well, that's when we would then trigger this, I think. Go to card 31. And then it says the bombers release their ordnance. So fair enough they are, but... I guess we just don't pause proceedings there. Then when we come back, that's just going to move into there. And I think we're not going to see this one then. But part of me is unsure of that because it says here on the reveal, after the effects of flak are applied, go back to card one. And card one is to reveal any more that are unrevealed. Well, hold on, Grant. Do, do, look at that and the rules then, maybe. Look at that and the rules. Yeah, I'm still a little unsure how to finish this, this part off here. I'm looking at the reveal thing, I mean, you, you know me, have to reveal and then go back and do the next one. I mean, is this an exception to that? That the thing is, it stops everything because we've made contact right here. Because it does say here, again, contact ends the ray vector sequence and initiates the interception sequence. Red vector markers will henceforth be revealed during the patrol complete phase, which tends to make me think that we stop things here because we've made contact. We're going to, once we reach the raid, I think I said already, raid vector sequence, sorry, the patrol complete phase, which it really means part F of that, I think, the raid vector step, that is then going to do that, and then we're not going to see this vector marker underneath, I don't think. That would stop the problem of if we did reveal that and it was a raid marker, what do you do then? So maybe that's a, a way of avoiding that and that's why they've done it that way. So I'm going to say that this phase is now complete because it does say that contact, contact ends the raid vector sequence and initiates the interception sequence. I'm going to go with that. And we've just got to keep in mind that the, the bombers are going to drop their ordnance at the end of this. Um, turn, I want to say turn, but it's not really turn, is it? And the patrol complete uh, phase, step F, raid vector. That's when they're going to drop the bombs. And I think then none of that matters anymore. And we go into the outbound track, don't we? Okay, that's kind of rough going that. Um, so where are we then? <laughs> well, we're into the interception sequence. 
So I think that's order, isn't it? Well, what's it saying there? Yeah, orders is the first step. Right, I think it's probably a good time to uh, take a break. Well, I might be with... I might be with... Well, we'll see. We'll see. Um, uh, that's that's where we should be now. And uh, well, yeah, we're going to give we are going to give orders. But again, I think all this is just going to go into the bomber, and we're going to give a bomber order because we know the bombers are going to drop their bombs. We've got one little chance now. Well. We're not coming in from the nose because uh, that's that's a point because we need to disrupt, don't we? We absolutely need to disrupt to get any chance of any points. Uh, okay. Uh, and I'll, actually, I want to say we should have the bombers set up, shouldn't we? Because the weather's fine. Yeah, I think that should be set up. Well, I'll, I'm going to even pause for a bit. Uh, might be a short bit, might be a longer bit. I'm not quite sure, so I'll be back shortly. Cheers. Hi all. Right, back to continue this. Um, Patrol 2, part 2. Yeah, that's right, I think. Chapter 1, Patrol 2, part 2. Um, okay, so, so a few strange things. Well, you can see there's a lot of different things that can happen in this, in this game, isn't there? Um, I need to... Uh, also focus more on this and I don't know where more to look regarding this guys so I do need your help and just am I getting this right um, I mean you've seen I've talked about it enough I think are we sitting in the right position we're waiting to do the, ra the move the raid marker but it's been delayed because uh, this tally ho thing I guess um, is this right? Would should this vector marker not have been revealed here? That's kind of kind of a feel. And then when the red marker does mark move, all these are going to move away anyway. Let me know, cause it could well be. I, I just I f um struggling a bit with that one. I don't feel like it's it's not settling settling in with me too well that I'm getting it right. Um. So yeah, yeah. Let me know if uh, if I'm making a mess of things there. So, but the way I think of it, that's the way I'm seeing it. And uh, we've lost blue section because of this contact thing. Yeah, okay. Um, at least they're not in any danger, I suppose. So yeah, but it could be a bit. It could be quite a quick. Quick patrol this though the way things have turned out yeah because we've got one chance to break up the formation here and that's what we're going to do so let's go uh so we've got the orders step and i'm just going to grab a bombers marker because that's what we're doing i don't see the so go to card uh 16. Oh, right got things around the wrong way here Go to card 16. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. We've not placed out the bombers yet. In fact, does it not tell you here? If there is a, it is not cloud row of dying, place the bomber tiles, the bomber formation area, unless they're already there. Yeah, we haven't done this yet. So I'll maybe shove that up a little. That's quite a good thing, actually, the fact that you can just manoeuvre the... Obviously, if it'd been uh, paper maps... Uh, not so easy. Right, let's get the situation manual back and see what we're getting this time. Uh, chapter one, skirmishing over the channel. So, right, it's this one here. So, yeah, so we're going to roll on this first. 1 to 6, Stuka, 7 8, Junkers, 9 to 10, Donny, 11 to 12, Heinkel. So, so the, the higher chance is the, is the Stukas, right? But isn't that? Yeah. Okay, here we go. There's a six. It is going to be Stukas. Just. Um, so Stukas. And then, right, 1 to 5 that, 6 to 10 that, 11 to 12 that. So let's roll on that. 
Okay. Uh, no, it's not the bottom one. Uh, I think that's, a, that's the same as the one we got the very first time. Right, so I'm probably going to turn it that way again. So, yeah, I think that feels like, it feels like it suits my cable position better. So let's get uh, six Duca tiles and have a look. Uh, right, so I think that's how, how it should be. This one here. Is that right? One, two, three. Yeah. Yeah, so they're connected fully. So just, I suppose, after realising how this kind of can work, um, well, clearly this, this is the best tile to take out first, isn't it? Because that's going to isolate this, this, and obviously this. Yeah. But you can see, you can see how I could probably do that. I mean, okay, well, we're, we're three fighters down, admittedly. So we've only got nine fighters coming in here. But anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves, I suppose. Um, so that should be set. Oh, that's another thing. We need to deal with these two now. So that's going to knock. I've got to, I've got to just believe that that's going to knock one of them out of the formation, isn't it? So, um, so I'm going to randomise. Uh, Stu actually made a comment saying that it didn't matter which tile you picked with us. Well, I mean, I, my reply to him was, yeah, if it's if it's only one hit marker then yeah but sure if it's two like we've got here then it can't both go in the same tile because it does say that in the rules anyway but fair enough he might have just been commenting on the situation i had where we had one hit marker in place and like he said it doesn't really matter which one you it goes on really i mean i guess me, maybe in me does like to randomise and pick the tile that is <laughs> that is still random, but I mean it could be anyone. You could just plonk it on that aircraft, unless he was meaning anything more to that than than that. But uh, so I think I want to look up flak actually, just to get me right here. Fifty two flak. No bomber tiles. Have no tiles in the bomber area yet. Place the damage markers on the interception map. Later, when you finally place the tiles in the bomber formation area, apply the damage markers. Yeah, but I'm based on that on the previous step, which talks about how you place the bomber, uh, the damage markers. Place them randomly in bombers, one marker per tile, selecting the largest contiguous set of bomber tiles. Place one damage marker per tile, starting with the tile the fuse fallen, destroyed, and damage markers. Right, but um, yeah, I mean I'm going to I'm going to randomly select. So we'll 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 take the engine one first then. Because that's the one that's going to knock the... It's going to f put a fallen marker and knock the bomber um, to um, <clears throat> to be an independent bomber. So, tile-wise, what have we got? We've got six. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, right? So, let's do that first to find the tile. Uh, it is a six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So now I'm going to pick one of these bombers, one to four, etc. Going left to right. Got a five, so it's the one in the middle. So the one in the middle is going to receive that engine hat, which yeah, I've just got to take this as as I am seeing this that this is now because it's it's fallen. That's what the engine does. So this is a fallen bomber. And it falls out of formation. I'll just put it there for now. And it keeps its engine damage. Like that, right? So now, my take is I've got one more damage marker to place. So I can't place it on this tile now. Go and buy how it's said. So, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I'll re-roll... The 11, 12, 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 1 to 4, etc. To pick which, 
All right. So the third uh, bomber there. And the fuselage being a catastrophic possibility, that was checked already. Um, yeah, I'm not so sure what the point was checking that already. I mean, I'd, I, if it was checked, if we had rolled a 10 or higher, all I would have had was, I would have had the the damage marker and I would also have had a destroyed marker because that's what would be happening when we when we went to place it. Um, but that's not, so that's fine. Okay. Um, yeah, so bomber tiles and the bomber formation, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we've done all that. Formation, formation squadrons, formation squadron flight or section that are on the interception map must be assigned an order. So that's, so yeah, we're giving this a bomber's order. We're going after the bombers because we know at the end of this whole turn, I keep saying turn, I don't think that's the right terminology there, but um, that the 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 bombers are going to drop the bombers uh, drop drop their bombs sorry um okay so we go following the cards this is going to take us to card 16 for bombers so we flip that over and we get the bombers card actually i might bring that around the other side it's a bit close to the lamp that, that might be a bit better okay Right, I've got to remember there's, I've got 31 minutes already on the previous little cut there, so that's just about 40 odd minutes now, isn't it? Um, if, I, if the attempt is, yeah, sorry, resolve each formation's bombers order by rolling a die, consulting the intercept bombers table. Right, okay. Yeah, I don't know why I put the cards there. I'm better bringing an individual card out now if we need to look at it. So, yeah, well, we need that chart, right? So we're going to attempt to intercept bombers. Now let's just uh, remind ourselves where we are. We're in the port, which is the flank, at low altitude. Um, uh, yeah, that's basically it. Well, the other thing to take note of is they're in the starboard station, and we've got that in the lead station. But right, maybe just out of out of reach there. So, oh. right, sorry, I had a bit of a sneezing fit there, which you didn't want to hear. Okay, so flank, starboard, or port. Well, we're, we're in the port, which is important because of that. So, now, well, we're no veterans anyway. I think this is possibly the one that no, is it the escorts? I, I, I don't know. Uh, Tim also commented on this as well about adding the using the veterans to all add their plus one. I don't know if it was to do with the escort. Uh, it's re regarding the pluck thing, isn't it? Pluck is that in the probably not. It's a veteran privilege or grant, so it's close by. Uh, pluck. Yeah, this this is a here. I think I think I read. I might have read this already, and I think this is the the what Stuart mentioned. That was a wee bit hard to decipher what he was mean. Uh, suppress escort when making a suppress escort check after completing a dog fight. Well, see that's I don't know if that's. Did they not say something about it being an example? Well, hang on. There is an example that says two veteran section leaders provide a plus two modifier, for example. Must have been involved in the dog fight. Yeah. You know what? I've not... I, I guess I've not done enough of that. We've done it the first time, tried to suppress the escorts, but... Uh, I'm just going to leave that. I'm going to leave that for now. Um, I, I, I feel like it's better taking your chances just try to get in on the bombers and get some points. Uh, and uh, I think as the chapters move on, things are going to change regarding that. I get, I get the feeling anyway. 
So anyway, back to where we are. We're in the low position, which means we're going to have to spend the fuel here. And there is an escort. This is the box if you had no escort, by the way. So there is an escort. There's two escorts. One is in the lead station, and it, they're both 109s. So that would be a five to roll. And the other one is in the starboard station, which is 10 slash 5 here. But as you can see, if we are on the same side of it, it's going to be a 10. If we're on the other side of it, which we are on the port, it's going to be a 5. So both are, we pick the highest number between the two, which is a 5. Remember, we can reroll by spending our fuel. So, yeah, we need to roll a 5. So I'd rather do it, and this, oh hang on, hang on, no, we need to spend the fuel first. The fuel markers are going to disappear for a bit behind that big stack of blue, the blue squadron. Um, right, so we need to spend that fuel first, and then roll a five, or greater. Oof, right, okay, that's, that's a big roll, that. That means you don't really... I'd, I wouldn't have minded spending the fuel because I don't think I'm going to be there that long. But it, you just want it. You want that the answer to that to be yes, you've succeeded. I wouldn't like to be rolling again whether I would spend the fuel or not. So if the attempt to intercept bomber succeeds, place the area fighters in the bomber formation area and go to card one bomber cycle sub deck. Um, bomber cycle sub deck. Yeah. So this order has been complete. This is now can move off the the map, and all our fighters are going to be in the. Well, they're coming in from the port. So that's what they've got to do. And in the fact, I think when we look at the bomber cycle card, that will tell us that. Uh, each area fight in the bomber formation area engages a bomber or must RTB. Exception area fighters that are already there. Right, remove the way markers already in play. None of that's happening because choose an approach angle, nose, two flanks, tail, and place the RAF fighter. If it is bomber cycle round one, RAF fighters must approach from the same angle that they entered the bomber formation in the intercept phase. So this is round one. We're coming in from the flank. So I don't think there's anything that bothers us there. There's no penalty it's not low nose and it's not tail and um yeah that's it it's it's round one and we're coming in from the port okay so let's uh let's work out where we're putting all these um oh hold on hold on we need our bomber deck uh so it's a light bomber so it's two cuz so I'm going to shuffle that up. Now I'm not getting to have a cheeky look at a card that's in the discard pile this time. Um, but I've got to assume things are similar. I mean, these are white bombers rather than heavy. Uh, medium. So there might be some differences. But I've got, my take on it has just got to try and be the same as what we were. To try and separate these tiles by... To be honest, this tile is important to get first so I might well want to put a couple of shots on that one and remember all we're looking to do is disrupt here so right shuffle shuffle cut the deck there we go right um, and all we've got we've got three sections here red yellow and green Everyone's got a green pilot and nobody's got a veteran pilot. No ace skills either. So, uh, yeah, so there's nothing really fancy that can be done. Um, and the good thing about this one is it, is in the, uh, it has got one damage on it. So that's going to add to things. Right, let me we'll try and work out the, the puzzle here to see if we can get one, two, three, four, five, six points. Um, ideally, we want to take this out and then this out, and then that gives us six points, isn't it? And when I say this out and this out, I just mean disrupt this, isolate this, and then isolate that, and then 
isolating this isolates these two as well, and then isolating that isolates these two as well. So, okay. Right, that's, that's my initial uh, thinking on this, and I've piled, this is a stack of three, the, the green section, uh, green weeder, green three, and then green two. And the reason being, because we're meant to be coming in from the, oh, yeah, no, that's right, the port side's the left one, yeah. So we may have come in for the port, but these are all queued up here to go in on that, so I, didn't, I, I wasn't able to spread them out. But they're all individual uh, going for that. So this looks like uh, the, the easiest way to deal with this. And you might say, well, why do you need three of these? Well, I just want to make sure this is a more important tile here. Um, and all we need to do is take out this tile and this tile. And then, okay, we're going to lose two points. If we take out this tile, we're going to lose two suppression uh, suppression disruption points um, that we could have elsewhere, or maybe on this tile or this tile or this tile. But um, I need to make sure this tile goes. So that gives us three shots at drawing a disruption of three, six, nine, ten, eleven. You know what? That's probably overkill, isn't it? I don't know though. I'm a bit concerned. I'm not. Th these are the white bombers as well, and I'm just. Uh, I mean, we did see some twelves and thirteens, and we're only getting one shot at this. As in, we're only getting one round. Uh, Eh, no, you're not. Oh, no, you're not. You're getting another bomber round, Grant. You're getting round two. Ah, okay. Um, maybe I should change that up a little. I'll at least take that one away then. Just leave the two on that. And, and the reason these are all on this tile is because, remember... We want to isolate this one next. Yeah, but we don't need to all be attacking that tile, Grant. <clears throat> uh, well, not, that's fine. These are attacking this fighter and these are attacking... Sorry, bomber. These are attacking this bomber and these are attacking this bomber. And this one's already fallen. So... So I probably am better just, uh, well, I don't know where to put this one though. I mean, you might, you might say, what about this guy here who's got an engine hat, but remember he's not attached to everything and we want to make sure we get the most out of our disruption. Um, which, yeah, I'm sure you know that if you... Uh, I should probably spread this out a bit more then, shouldn't I? I guess I'm just thinking this this is the other tile that's got a fallen marker on it as well, so we've got a good chance of uh, wiping this tile out, maybe. And the Stukas need three of any ha uh, any damage. One cockpit and only one... Oh. And only one engine grant. <laughs> Damn it! That's annoying then, because that is destroyed, but we're not getting the victory point for it. I've, I've wondered there. Because there's only one engine hit, so that's destroyed. Um, but because it was destroyed through flak, we don't get the victory point for it. Um, so I really could do... Uh, Uh, marking that because I might I might sort of forget that. I'll just put a little green cube. That's the nearest thing at hand, um, just to say that that's not a victory point to us. And in fact, hold on. Wouldn't that? Is it? No, I can't put a fallen marker on it. Because if I put a fallen marker on it, there has to be another independent air bomber, doesn't there? Right. I'll just leave the green cube then. And uh, we'll remember that that's not worth any victory points. Um, hmm. 
I don't know. Maybe you know. Maybe I should only be going two on this, two on this. Well, I'll take this one off and we'll go for something else. Uh, maybe this here. Uh, no, hang on. We need to come in from the port. I know it's not that. And then we'll bring this red one in here then as well. Yeah? So it means if we check this tile first, we've got nine fighters and two damage markers all connected up so the uh, disruption check is going to be an 11 and then we're then going to check it again with this one if, if for some reason we get a, high, a higher than 11 number and then when we go to check we're going to then check this tile attack this next we're going to have three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But we're going to have a few shots of that. We're going to have one, two, three, four, five shots of that one. Aren't we? Okay. Uh, right, 25 minutes, Grant, and you had 31. I wonder if I should cut the video there then. I'm just, again, going to come straight back. So, yeah, I'm going to do that just to make the video not quite so long. And I'm going to come straight back, so I'm going to know where I'm at. So that's me just setting up my approach, really. It's Bomber Cycle round one. Uh, must, have, must attack from the same angle. Well, I need to come in from the port. And uh, there's no penalties. And, yeah, and then after that, we're going to just start drawing... Cards burst, we're going to start drawing dogfight, um, sorry, uh, bomber cards, yeah that's the word. Right, okay, I will do that, keep the video to an hour-ish, um, and um, yeah, this is, what, this, is, this is part two, isn't it? Yeah, okay, so I'll be back with part three very soon, cheers.